Excellent work, Commander. Capturing the alien subjects alive allows for a much wider range of experimentation versus the expired specimens. Interrogate Mutant Elite. Amazed we were able to capture one of the Master Alien's bodyguards alive. It probably has a broad understanding of the invaders' weapon systems and tactics. Similar in general appearance to the Muton species our troops have battled on the field, this particular captive is different. We've seen evidence of an inherent intellectual capacity not found in the other variants, and we believe this elite Muton serves a more defined role within the invasion force. The captive's sheer physical power and increased savvy made its interrogation both dangerous and exhilarating. After establishing an enhanced security protocol to deal with the risks involved, we began the interrogation process using our previously established techniques. As it turns out, this captive had the distinct honor of serving as a guard with an alien force, and had a complete understanding of the various weapon systems available to the invaders. With this knowledge in hand, I believe this information will greatly reduce the time we spent researching and developing these advanced new weapons. Muton Elite Autopsy. As if its heightened muscle density, hardened skin, and redundant organs weren't enough, this alien appears to have neural implants that facilitate command and control functions. Given the circumstances, the specimen would appear ideal for guard duty. As if the standard Muton hadn't given us enough trouble, the aliens apparently kept several of these elites in waiting for the later stages of their invasion. As if the standard mutedown had given our troops enough trouble, the aliens apparently kept several of these elites in waiting for the later stages of their invasion. Although they seem to have the distinct honor of serving as guards within the alien hierarchy, our autopsy of the specimen reveals little in the way of distinguishing anatomical traits versus a typical muton. Aside from various improvements to their armor, the primary difference appears to be a slightly enhanced intelligence, which makes them more effective combatants. The details surrounding this creature's specific combat capabilities should be available during future encounters by targeting one in the unit analysis view. Interrogate Ethereal We know this captive is harboring an incredible pool of psionic energy. A fact that is not lost on our staff who are quite concerned about working in close proximity to the creature. In any case, we have no choice but to conduct a thorough interrogation of the subject if we hope to gain anything of value from it. This creature, clearly a member of the alien leadership cast responsible for this invasion, presented us with an extremely risky and difficult interrogation prospect. Despite our previous experience in safeguarding the facility from the potential effects of the abilities exhibited by the psionic alien species, this captive's power exceeded the previously established limits of our testing. Much of the information we were able to discern from this creature was cryptic at best as it made every effort to resist our, even our most invasive procedures during the interrogation. However, 
experimental imaging equipment we had been using to monitor the alien's brain activity did reveal a very unusual pattern of neural activity that we believe is closely tied to the creature's power. This information should prove useful in reducing the time required for our research in a variety of fields. Ethereal Autopsy The alien appears physically weak, even frail, but appearances can be deceiving. It is a remarkably hardy specimen with a brain chemistry and structure utterly unknown to our science. This specimen appears to be at the top of the alien hierarchy, and for good reason. As you've probably seen, its physical form is not suited for combat by any means. However, these elders have an incredible pool of psionic energy at their disposal, which helps to explain why the other species are subordinate to them. This specimen appears to be at the top of the alien hierarchy, and for good reason. As we've noted in the field, its physical form is not suited for combat by any means. Their bodies actually appear to be quite frail, with evidence of atrophy and muscular degeneration having occurred over an extended period of time. This is not surprising as initial radiocarbon dating indicates this particular creature could be several thousand years old. Unlike the other specimens we've examined, there's little to indicate that it was genetically enhanced, at least not to the same ambition as the others. Strangely enough, we have uncovered similarities between the ethereal brain and that of the sectoid commander. Both show the same enhanced synaptic connections, confirming our suspicion that this is the likely source of their power. These ethereals appear to have an incredible pool of psionic energy at their disposal, more than anything we've previously encountered which helps to explain why the other species are subordinate to them. The unit analysis view should provide additional information about this creature's combat capabilities in the field. Sectopod Autopsy The engineering advancements found in this machine are remarkable. The joint articulation, weapon systems, and targeting capabilities in particular well beyond current military developments on Earth. The practical applications are staggering. This heavily armored unit is fully mechanized, though we're still not sure if it has an organic component within. Although this robot is neither alive nor sentient, is strangely self-aware of its surroundings. We're still uncovering the functional details for this species, but from what we've seen so far, this machine is a masterpiece of technology. Based on our initial testing, we discovered an extremely intricate program that's implanted in their macroprocessors. This combat control program, combined with Sectopod's imposing 10-meter frame, makes for an extremely dangerous weapon. Powered by the same energy source that fuels the alien craft, these machines weld unparalleled destructive power. Perhaps the biggest mystery is the secret of how they are being controlled. Additional information regarding the specimen's tactical abilities may be available in the field if another of these machines is targeted in the unit analysis view. to the wire here. Now that we've backed the aliens into a corner, I think we'll see what they're really made of. Personally, I expect nothing short of pure desperation in their existence. They've invested too much to go down without a fight. Developing 
an electromagnetic weapon capable of emitting a focused pulse that will penetrate the alien's advanced shielding. We've also had to find a means to protect our own ship's sensitive electronic circuitry. The functionality of the weapon itself had already been well established by previous testing conducted by Earth's various terrestrial military forces, leaving us with little to determine outside of the energy requirements and effective range. Although the additional shielding required to protect our systems will necessitate a reconfiguration of our ship's hardpoints for the weapon's mount, I expect the engineering team will have no trouble fitting the device into position. If our pilots can successfully deploy the pulse against the alien craft, we should be able to bring down the UFO with minimal damage to the artifacts and equipment carried inside. Ethereal device. The device we recovered from the Ethereal craft may be the final piece of the puzzle, the key to their silent connection, and the ultimate source of their power. With a better understanding of this technology, I believe we'll be on the brink of finding the source of this invasion. I accept the fact that there could be risks involved in studying this new alien device, but the enemy leaves us with no other choice. Large contact and it's coming in fast. We're going to have a difficult time keeping up with this one. Engaging bogey. Ready to deploy. Our AO is within the continental United States. It looks like the alien crash site is in a remote area. If we move quickly, we may be able to secure the site before the aliens have time to regroup. Loud and clear, Big Sky. We'll monitor those readings from here. Strike One is authorized to assault the alien craft. You're the boss! Contacts. You're 
of the bus. I'm on the move. Going there now. Headed there now. There now. I feel it, Commander. Moving to position. Activity.
Moving out. Orders confirmed. On the move.
on task. over there.
I'm rolling. Objectives complete. 